The fans of this show knew this one was coming. Penn State is set to meet the Ole Miss Rebels in the Peach Bowl down in Atlanta, Georgia. And for Penn State, this is going to be a really good measuring stick to see how good this team actually is. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That is right. You are locked on Nittany Lions. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Zach Zako, bringing you all things Penn State Nittany Lions. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs is here to help you find the right candidates faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Today's episode is also brought to you by Team Ticker, the high tech sports sign with a retro look. Show your team pride and go to teamticker.com and enter code locked on to get $50 off your online order this holiday season. That is a Team Ticker. To my left there, if you haven't seen one before, if you're new to the show, if you are new to the show, be coming every day or help out the channel. Subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Saw this one coming, folks. We did. If you were watching this show, you knew that Penn State was headed to the Peach Bowl before it was announced here on Sunday, December 3rd. But it was a matter of, well, who are they going to play? And now we know that they're playing the Mississippi Rebels. We're talking about an overview of the game. An early preview, early impressions of what Ole Miss could bring to the table when that game rolls around on December 30th. And I, I got a rant about the college football playoff committee in my final segment for this episode. So Penn State is in the Peach Bowl. Two and a half point favorite, 47 and a half total set by FanDuel, the official sports book of Lock On. Penn State coming into this one at number 10, according to the college football playoff committee. And Ole Miss, number 11. This is one of the most ideal matchups you could have asked for across the board. As a college football fan, spectator, as Penn State and Ole Miss fans alike, these are two teams that, yes, while the season's finished at 10-2, and two, I'm sure that Ole Miss had college football playoff aspirations as well. But even though the seasons, the expectations fell a little short for both squads, these are two teams that certainly have not packed it in. There's going to be not some players are going to opt out on both sides. We expect that, but a, a bulk of both teams are going to be present for this one. And, and as you can see, FanDuel thinks this is going to be a close game, a struggle back and forth, making for good college football, entertaining college football as both season can be hit or miss because of all the changes that come over the next month. Uh, but this game on Saturday, December 30th, set for a noon Eastern time kickoff. This is a New Year's Six game. I, I just want to clarify for some people because it isn't on New Year's Day, but it, it is part of the New Year's Six bowl slate. As I said, we saw this one coming. We knew that Penn State was going to be in the Peach Bowl. It was just a matter of who they were going to face. The evidence was there, okay? I can make that prediction because it was easy to read be in between the lines. The Peach Bowl executives, the committee themselves said that Penn State makes a lot of sense for us. And it's like, yeah, it, it does. Penn State does make a lot of sense for you because the Nittany Lions have never been to the Peach Bowl in its existence. Now, now dubbed the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. But since the late 90s, since the Peach Bowl has been a, a bowl game, Penn State has never been invited. That's how these things work. Depending on where you rank, your prestige. The bowl committee sit back and say, which two schools, which two teams make the most sense for us? Okay, there's a little bit of a discussion based on what the college football playoff committee thinks, but no one points and tells them, okay, you're taking those two teams. You have to take the seven and the 10. You have to take the 10 and the 11. It works out in this case. Like I said, this is an ideal matchup across the board because you are going to get good quality college football late in the season. But there, there's no mathematical formula. There's nothing that the only thing that these bowls have to abide by is some of them have to take an SEC team. Some of them have to take the ACC team, the best one. Others have the at large. And for the Peach Bowl, they have the at two at large selections. Penn State was one of them. Ole Miss was the other. So you're getting a Big Ten SEC matchup, but the Peach Bowl has the flexibility to get and pick whatever school they want to. 
we speculated, could it be Oklahoma? Could it be Missouri? Ole Miss, not, not too far. I feel like those three schools in that category, good matchups for Penn State. Now, I like this matchup. I do like this matchup against Ole Miss, and I'm going to talk about them a little more in the second segment. But this is a good offensive team when you look at it. I mean, Lane Kiffin's an offensive coach. But I got to admit, I honestly preferred Oklahoma a little more. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. It could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse because Liberty was out there. I know Tulane ended up losing to SMU, but Penn State could have faced one of those two teams in an at-large selection. And I am so glad that Oregon is playing the likes of Liberty and Penn State is not. So my preference was Oklahoma because I really like that offense and what they're able to do. However, I'm not going to complain because this is an SEC matchup and everybody says down south, oh, the SEC, SEC football's different. The, the Big Ten can't hang with the SEC schools. We get to find out. We do. And like I said, both of these rosters will be mostly intact. I, I don't think there are going to be any surprise opt-outs here. Penn State was never going to be left out of a New Year's Six Bowl. I know that people on, on the internet, because it's easy, right, to put bad takes out there that Penn State doesn't belong in a New Year's Six Bowl, and the committees would never even consider taking them. But this is a top 10 team. The college football playoff committee thought so. They're number 10, never been to a Peach Bowl. So, like I said, the way that the committees don't want the same teams over and over and over again. Penn State has never been. The Fiesta Bowl and the Cotton Bowl have taken Penn State in the past decade here. The Peach Bowl has never had them. Like I said, since the late 90s, since it, since it became a regular bowl game. But outside of Indiana, well, Penn State's best win is Iowa, and they really don't deserve it because they just beat up on a bunch of cupcakes. You beat up on a 8-4 and four West Virginia team, may I remind you. You beat up on the Big Ten West champion. These weren't close games. Penn State didn't beat West Virginia by a field goal or seven points. Same thing with Iowa. They beat Iowa 31 to nothing, better than Michigan did, and they beat an 8-4 and four West Virginia team that was very competitive in the Big 12. So the people that say, well, Penn State doesn't have the resume or the strength of schedule, your only losses were to Michigan, who's in the college football playoff, and Ohio State, who was in the conversation to be placed in the college football playoff this season. And those losses were by margins of eight points on the road and nine points at home, both of which should have been single score games. That's besides the point, but they were single digit deficits. And so don't tell me that, well, Penn State, it the only team they struggled with was Indiana, where they should have, again, beaten them uh, handedly. They didn't. But all the other opponents, they did. And that's very telling. Penn State was very good at handling business, no matter you can only do with what's you can only do with what's on your schedule. And that's why I want to rant about the committee and Florida State a little bit. As I mentioned at the top of the show, Ole Miss is a great measuring stick to know how good Penn State actually is. The everydayers remember me saying this, and I'll say it again because why not? I, I like I like beating this drum. I like this tune. Penn State is in college football purgatory. Not good enough to play with Ohio State and Michigan, and probably not really so Georgia, Alabama. Basically, those top six teams, the elite teams, the elite schools right now. But Penn State. Well, they're beating up on Utah. They beat up, I, I know, Memphis, right, in the, in the Cotton Bowl not too long ago. Handled Washington, no problem, in the Fiesta Bowl. Penn State is not good enough to be with the elite teams, but still a little too good for the above average, really competitive teams. And Ole Miss is the next one up on this slate because they blew Utah out of the water in the Rose Bowl game. Ole Miss can give us an idea of how good Penn State actually is. Are they, is it truly they are a step behind Michigan and Ohio State, or is it a large gap? How large is the gap? We're going to know because Penn State, this is a comparable game. FanDuel says so. FanDuel thinks this one's going to be close at two and a half to open up the game. Ole Miss, great passing game, top 15 in the country, well-coached and all-around talented, and as I mentioned, number 11 in the country and from the SEC conference, okay? ACC, a little bit of a weaker power five. I know I'm going to save that for Florida State, but they're not getting a conference. They're not getting a game from a team that's in the group five or in the ACC where it's like, okay, well, we know that Penn State is that much better. The SEC, that is a challenge to see just how good this team actually is. 
Penn State gets the best case scenario here. Best case scenario. They could have drawn a matchup like Liberty, SMU, Tulane, and I don't think anybody would have been enticed. I don't think anybody would have been excited for this game. You could have been placed in a lower cal- caliber bowl. You could, they could have been left out of the, of the New Year's Six. But from an entertainment standpoint, from a prestige standpoint, Penn State's going for its fourth New Year's Six bowl win in the past decade here. You got to be impressed somewhere. I know the fans and, and myself wanted to see a college football play, uh, playoff berth, but to go for four New Year's Six Bowl titles under James Franklin, they're going to have to build another trophy case. And I, and I hope it can expand even further because this team, the transfer portal and everything coming up it is, not, is not out of it going into 2024. I, I am give, excited for that conversation in the offseason for where Penn State projects to go into next season. Penn State's playing Ole Miss. Uh, the Rebels, what do they What do they bring to the football field? Just how good are they? We're going to discuss that in the upcoming segment here. Let's hear from one of our sponsors on today's episode, and that is LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, that's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It is easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs, then add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and then hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And I want to tell you about another sponsor on today's episode, and that is Team Ticker. Back there, if you're watching, if you're watching this episode, if you're listening back, I'm going to do a great job of describing it because right there to my left is a Team Ticker sign. The everydayers will recognize it. If you're a new watcher, a new listener, we'll get ready to learn about Team Ticker, the one-of-a-kind sports sign for Nittany Lion fans. Whether it's football, men's and women's basketball, baseball, soccer, softball, Team Ticker has you covered because you are never going to miss a game again as that high-tech retro display provides a countdown to the next big game as well as daily updates on the latest team news, stats, schedules, standings, rankings, and much more. Zach, how to... How does that happen? How does it do it? Well, it's a smart sign. You download the app. You set it up in a matter of minutes. I had it hung up on the wall in a matter of seconds as well. Setup is super easy. Mobile app connects to the internet so that you can get those up-to-the-minute updates. Each sign is officially licensed, and it is meeting high-quality standards and assembled by hand in the U.S. Team Ticker is the ultimate upgrade to your Nittany Lions sports collection. And once you hang it on the wall, it is going to be the talk of all your fellow Nittany Lion fans. If you're looking for that one eye-catching item to showcase your team pride or a gift for that special Nittany Lions fan, it is the holiday season. Christmas is right around the corner, quicker and faster than it appears. (laughs) Go to teamticker.com and pick up your team ticker today. And Team Ticker wants to help you, especially if you're getting a gift. Use promo code locked on and you get $50 off your purchase. That's right at teamticker.com. Promo code locked on. You get $50 off your team ticker purchase. Take advantage of that this holiday season. Lock, promo code locked on for $50 off your team ticker purchase at teamticker.com. And the Locked On Podcast Network is proud of this one launching the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube where do you go to check it out you go to locked on sports today here for you covering this covering sports 24 7 the top stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus the national shows covering each and every league go to locked on sports today on youtube and subscribe to the first ever the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel ole miss is coming into the peach bowl 10 and 2 overall like penn state Number 11 in the nation, led by head coach Lane Kiffin, who's definitely been around college football for a long time. He's seen it all, like James Franklin. And this Ole Miss team, as I mentioned in the first segment, is an all-around talented team. 
Now, these are just some early impressions. What you need to know about the Rebels, what stand out about them as they go up against the Nittany Lions. But so much can change in a matter of four weeks, right? If you're watching the show, recording it on Sunday, December 3rd, or if you listen to it on the 4th, so much can change in a matter of time between the 30th here. But here's what you need to know about Ole Miss. Uh, of course, offensive team. And, that, and that's what I wanted to see. I didn't want to see another defensive juggernaut against Penn State. I want to see a team that can actually challenge the best run defense in the nation and a top 25 pass defense. Well, if they're going to challenge the number one rush defense, it starts and ends with Quinshawn Judkins. And Judkins was one of the, one of the mainstays in the All-America conversations in the preseason this year. Now, he, he wasn't fantastic. He was great as a true freshman. But this season took a little bit of a step back, but still, a thousand yard rusher, 15 rushing touchdowns. The running game begins and ends with Quinshawn Judkins. That is the name you need to know if you're looking at anybody, anybody on this roster for Ole Miss and who Lane Kiffin's going to give the football to, especially on offense. It is Quinshawn Judkins. The run game is average overall in terms of yards per carry. They're middle of the pack, top 50, but Quinshawn Judkins is a star player. They have star power on offense. When healthy, so I, normally you start with the quarterback, but it's hard to pass up Judkins here in this conversation. Then Now we'll go to J Jackson Dart, USC transfer. He, he lit it up when he was a first-year player coming in for the Trojans and everything, ultimately transferred, landed at Ole Miss, and battled a few injuries here and there, banged up in the Egg Bowl, ended up leaving the game against Georgia, but when healthy, Jackson Dart is the starting quarterback. And I think he's taken a step back since he's gone from USC to Ole Miss because what he was doing at USC in one season was pretty impressive. Ends up transferring to play under Lane Kiffin. And Dart hasn't exactly progressed into that NFL caliber first round type that some scouts, some college football analysts expected him to, but still respectable starter. He, if he's going to be healthy, he will play in this game. And, and a test for Penn State because he can sling the football just like any just like any other quarterback in, in the country. But the passing game is electric. It is top 15 in the country. Part of that is Jackson Dart. Part of that's the offensive line. Doesn't give up a lot of pressures. But they have three great options. Not one, not two, not three. It'd be nice if Penn State had this problem. They have three guys in the passing game that really take up a lot of the workload. Trey Harris, Dayton Wade, and Jordan Watkins. All three of them. Each have 700 receiving yards this season. It's, it's not focused, hyper-focused to one player. Kind of like it is in the running game with Judkins, but any of these guys can step up at any given moment. Perfect battle because Penn State, if they're all going to play, we uh, the jury's still out on, is Kalen King going to opt out? What about Johnny Dixon? Because I think Johnny Dixon has played his way into an NFL draft selection. If it's these three guys and Trey Harris, Dayton Wade, and Jordan Watkins, and what if any of them opt out? But let's say perfect, perfect world, ideal matchup, right? All three of them versus Hardy, Dixon, and Kalen King. You couldn't ask for a, a better X's and O's matchup. You really couldn't. Harris does lead the team, and at least these three receivers, with eight receiving touchdowns. But Kiffin is an offensive mind, and we know this, so it is not surprising that the offense, in terms of the passing game, is top 15. Run game is still respectable because what kind of stars you have, like Quinshawn Judkins. But the defense is the middle of the road. So Penn State's offense, let's see now with the new play callers, and I have a note on Kotal Nicky in a second here, but Penn State's offense going up an Ole Miss defense that does give up some yards. But they did play good competition in the SEC, so I will give them that. And Penn State's offense has been mediocre, okay? It's, the offense did not look good. I know they look good against Michigan State, but Michigan State was one of the worst offenses. The defense was able to capitalize on that, give the offense short fields, and, and Michigan State couldn't do anything to stop them overall in the game. That They packed it up. Their season was finished a long time ago. And Penn State knew that and really, and, and like I said, they rolled over them in this case. But that's not a good way to measure Penn State. Like I said, this is a nice test to see where the team is, but what about the offense now? Because J1 Sider and Ty Howell are still going to be handling play calling duties. Andy Kotelnicki is not going to be calling games or calling plays in this game. He's 
mostly going to be an analyst in this case. So Penn State strategically hired him as quickly as possible because they want him to see how things go in terms of game preparation. So there's not that disconnect. He's going to be there as a spectator. He'll coach a little, not actively coach in the game, but as the, you know, be like I said, be an analyst, be a person that people can go to for knowledge, explanations, questions, but he's not going to be actively coaching. He's not calling plays. I just want to put that out there for everybody. Andy Kolonicki is simply there to watch before he actually takes over as the offensive coordinator. Not coaching in this game. He's not calling plays. Just there to observe. So it's still Jay One Sider and Ty Howe is going to be splitting play caller duties as the co-offensive coordinators in this game. College football playoff committee. They did not get the top four right. That's my opinion. I want to know your thoughts in the comments as well, but I'm going to discuss my thoughts in the final segment on this episode. Before we get to that, let's hear from another one of our sponsors on today's episode, and that is FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel, and right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. It's that simple. It's that easy. That's $150 bucks if your team simply wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, overs and unders and more. And right now, Penn State, as I've said on the show, is a two and a half point favorite versus Ole Miss with the total set at 47 and a half. So if you like those lines, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and keep playing along with the football season, college football, NFL. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And in this final segment, let's discuss those top four teams, the college football playoff committee. They got it wrong. They did. The college football playoff committee really, I, they stunned me. And I know a lot of people were rooting for Florida State to be left out of the top four because, oh, they're boring. They don't look that good. Jordan Travis is hurt. Even the second string quarterback is hurt. They do not deserve to be in over the likes of Texas or Alabama who won their respective conference championship games, but they did it because they looked more exciting. I, I'm fine with the college football playoff top four. I, I really, I, I'm okay with it. But the absolute utter disrespect to Florida State and the message that you convey by leaving the Seminoles out. I understand that the ACC is one of the weaker, is probably the weakest Power Five football conference, but it's still Power Five. Florida State beat LSU to open up the season. Against Louisville, who is a top 20 team, top 15 team at that, right? Going into the ACC championship game. They took a uh, dropped a couple of spots after the loss. Does the regular season even matter, right? You, Florida State did everything it was asked to do. And that's why I said in the beginning of the show, you can only handle what is on your schedule. And Florida State did that. They went 13-0. They beat everybody from ranked LSU, SEC teams to all the teams in the ACC, out of conference, in conference, no matter. Won the conference championship. So does you, the college football playoff committee sat back and said, well, none of that matters. None of that matters because what? Their quarterback got hurt? Is that really the reason why? Or that Florida State isn't a top four team? That's a top four defense. I can tell you that much. Holding Louisville, who is a top 20 offense statistically, to six points on a neutral field. They didn't win. They won in spite of not having Jordan Travis or a second string quarterback down to QB3. And they still won these games at the end of the season, beating Florida on the road, winning against Louisville in the ACC championship game. So you're essentially saying the regular season does not matter at all. And if we're leaving out teams because of injured quarterbacks or down to the third string, why was Ohio State allowed in the college football playoff back in the 2014-2015 season? Remember that? I can't, believe I, I can't believe I am defending Ohio State in this case or using them to help my cause, to defend my argument. Ohio State had Cardell Jones quarterback number three, and they knocked off number one Alabama, who no one gave them a chance against, and won the national title. I'm not saying, I'm not implying that that would have happened with Florida State, 
that they would have had the similar type of success. But anything can happen in college football. The games are not played on paper. They're playing on the football field. If they were played on paper, Oregon would be in. Okay? Oregon showed that it is not a top four team. That is great that the analytics and the computer and, and everybody else can say, well, Oregon should have been a 10-point favorite because they are that good. And maybe if they played again, you win the games that you were told to play, that they are the games that are on your schedule. There's no hypothetical. You win the games and you're in. That's how it works. What, USC going in 7 and 5? Do we give them mulligans because they were supposed to be better with Caleb Williams? No, you don't. They lost five games because they were not that good of a football team this year. We're holding Penn State to it, right? They lost two games, so they're nowhere near the college football playoff. But a team that goes 13-0, and 0, I understand if there was a hiccup or a bump in the road along the way, and then you had this, but you held a top 15 team on a neutral field to six points. Louisville is an offensive team, an offensive powerhouse. They're not a defensive team. And Florida State, despite having the third string true freshman quarterback, they were able to win the way that they did. Here's what I would have done differently. I would have left out Alabama simply because they lost head-to-head -to, -head to Texas. My top four would have been Michigan, Washington, those teams undefeated, won the Power Five conference title, Florida State and Texas. Maybe you can argue to put Texas ahead at three and then Florida State at four, but Florida State's in. And I'm sorry, you don't get it. An SEC team does not get in in my top four. They don't. Alabama, you happen to lose to Texas at home. That wasn't a close game. The ball didn't bounce the wrong way. Texas beat you convincingly. You should have won that game. Congratulations. You were able to circle the wagons and win against Georgia, and that's what the committee valued enough. That's fine, but in this case, I, you lost to Texas, and Texas did enough on its resume, and that's why they're able to knock you out. And bottom line is here, right? This is why we needed a 12-team playoff, because a case could have been made for any of the schools to get, even Ohio State, even Georgia. Georgia was number one. Georgia was number one, and naturally, if they did lose to Alabama, say that was a regular season game, Georgia probably would have fell to four in the rankings, only because it came down to crunch time in the championship games that the rankings took as much of a shift as it did. Georgia probably would have still been in the top four and made its way into the playoff it had, if it had lost that game to Alabama in the regular season. That's my point. But that is why we needed a college football playoff to go to 12 teams. Ohio State had a case. I hate to say that. They did. Georgia had a case. Florida State certainly had a case, but they left them out. But that's that's where we are here. The, these teams, and I'm glad that they're going to 12, so we can have the debate, but now everybody that does what it's supposed to do goes undefeated or only has one loss, wins a conference championship game, now really has a case because there's 12 spots. But like Mike Norvell, the Florida State head coach, said, this is disgusting. It is. I think I know why the committee did what it did. Conspiracy time here. The country as a whole did not want to watch Florida State. That was an ugly game, but they won by double digits. I don't care that it was ugly. You find a way to win. If you are a playoff caliber team, you win despite the circumstances, and that's what Florida State did. The committee knew that the country did not want to watch Florida State against whoever. Alabama, Michigan, Washington, doesn't matter. That was not going to draw the same as Michigan and Alabama, Texas and Washington. They wanted to, they had, they almost had to put Alabama in. And if you were going to put Alabama in, you had to put Texas in. So that's where Florida State loses out in this case. That Texas-Alabama game early in the season dictated the entire course of this college football season, if you can believe that. It actually did. Texas going on the road and beating Alabama the way it did changed everything. Who would have thought weeks later that this is what it would happen? But I I'm glad the I'm glad the 12 team playoff is here. It's here to stay. Hey, if FCS Division Two can can run a 24 team playoff, why can't Division One run a 12 team playoff? I can't believe we had to go through journalists or uh, bowl, uh, computers, BCS computers to figure it out. Then we finally made it to four teams. While all along, Division II football had a 24-team playoff. FCS had a 24-team playoff. 
and, and for some reason, we kept kicking this can down the road of, well, we can't go to 12. That's too many teams. They can do it. So I, I'm pretty sure Power 5, Group 5, Division 1, FBS can certainly do it. That's going to do it for my rant. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lions. I appreciate all of you checking out this episode. If you aren't already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Because if you want to hear all of these conversations about Penn State college football, this is the place to be as for the set. I want to pat myself on the back here. For the second year in a row, we have correctly predicted that Penn State would be in the Rose Bowl and then in the Peach Bowl before those bowl games were announced. Pretty proud of that myself, if I'm being honest. I appreciate all of you. We're going to have more discussions about Penn State Ole Miss, Penn State football, men's basketball, losing to Bucknell conversations. Yeah, now there it's time it's time to discuss the the Nittany Lions under Mike Rhodes, but it'll all be right here on Locked On Nittany Lions. <laughs>